So with this, um, I'll introduce the next um, early, um, or young scientist to you. Um, and this is uh, Ricardo Vélez from Hovion. He's working as an associate scientist um, in the Inhalation and Advanced Delivery Group. Um, he studied uh, chemical engineering at the university in Lisbon, and it is actually his master project which uh, brought him up on stage. Um, so he'll be talking about uh, enhanced lung delivery of mRNA using nebulized lipid nanoparticles. The floor is yours. Thank you for the presentation, and hello, everyone, and thank you for the invitation also. Hello, everyone. Today I'm here, my name is Ricardo, and today I'm here to present the work that I developed last year in my master thesis regarding the nebulization of mRNA lipid nanoparticles. As many of you know, uh, mRNA is a molecule that transports genetic information to complex machinery where this information is converted into proteins. And this interesting characteristic associated with uh, the mRNA COVID-19 vaccines increased the interest in this molecule for the treatment of other respiratory diseases. And with the time that we did not have with the COVID-19, it would be interesting to deliver these molecules to the lungs, since it could be enhanced its efficiency. However, mRNA is a sensitive molecule, and if you try to deliver them into the deep lungs, it will face challenges like aranases, which are enzymes that degrade the molecule, or the mucociliary clinics. So how can we deliver the mRNA without heavy, uh, having these problems and without degrading the molecule? The answer was to uh, use a carrier that could protect uh, the RNA from the immunity response, but also enables its endosomal escape. And for that, we decided to use lipid nanoparticles, already approved by FDA as a carrier on, on Patra drug, and also used in some of the COVID-19 vaccines. And we decided to use these particles because they can encapsulate our mRNA while maintaining the particle stability, and they are, have a good biodegradability. From the several technologies available, already available, the majority of them are based on the ethanol injection method. And uh, the, from the jet impingers used by Pfizer or uh, membrane emulsification or microfluidics, we decide to use microfluidics, which where we use a setup close to the one in the image, where our uh, two phases, an organic phase contain lipids and an mRNA uh, phase, where uh, an aqueous phase contain mRNA, was placed into a micromixer ship. And when the two solutions were mixed, the, due to the rise in the solvent polarity, our LNPs were produced. And with this system, we were able to fine tune uh, characteristics like the encapsulation efficiency, the particle size, either by changing the, form, the lipid uh, nanoparticle formulation or the process parameters. However, the solution where our LNPs are placed, it's not suitable for inhalation. So we need to perform a buffer exchange. For that, we use a system, a system similar to the one in the image where using a, a dialysis membrane under agitation, we perform the change of our salt, salt and organic solvents to a buffered a solution suitable for, for inhalation and could also, that could also enable our, our uh, stability under nebulization. For, with the, the, this solution, we nebulize the solution using a vibrating mesh nebulizer, which is most suitable for uh, this type of biological molecules and we decided to work with the Inospire Go nebulizer that is a vibrating mesh nebulizer that uses a piezoelectric transducer that due to the mo movement of the uh, metallic mesh can produce the droplets containing our lipid nanoparticles. And with this, this is the resume of the, the work that I performed where we first produce the lipid nanoparticles through microfluidics, then we perform a dialysis to change the buffer, and finally nebulize them to understand the particle uh, uh, stability and also the RNA integrity. So take this into account, let's, do, let's see the, the most interesting part, the results. So firstly, we start using a tRNA uh, molecule as a model molecule, and we produce several uh, tRNA LMP batches. And as you can see here by the blue bars, we uh, achieve a reproducible system with a particle size around 50 nanometers and the monodispersed population. Uh, the monodispersed population would be always below the red dotted line and is represented by all the, the symbols that we have in the image. 
After this nebulization, all the trials were uh, dialyzed in different buffered solutions. And these solutions comprised sugar, surfactants, and amino acids. Each trial represents a, diff a different buffered solution that was nebulized. And as you can see by the green, the green bars, we maintain the stability of the particle during dialysis. However, when we nebulized the formulations, none of the formulation was able to maintain the particle stability. But it can be seen that there are two formulations that appear to have some uh, improve, uh, can improve the particle colloidal stability. So we decide to evaluate uh, to try to improve these two formulations. One of the, our theories for the particle, for the appearing of two populations when nebulizing was the aggregation of the fusion of the particles. And that could be due to the high particle concentration in the solution. So we used the, the trial five containing a, a, a solution of PBS with twin 80 and the trial eight containing PBS with polyxamer, the previous two solutions, we decide to perform a dilution in the respective buffers and try to nebulize again. And this time, with the formulation containing PBS and twin 80, we were able to achieve a solution that was, uh, after nebulization, was able to maintain particle stability and the monodispersed population, as you can see here by the triangle. And also, during all the process steps, we were able to maintain the encapsulation efficiency of our tRNA. And at this point, we are happy because we had the first molecule that we could nebulize and achieve a particle stability. However, we don't know how is the integrity of our molecule. And for that, we decided to change molecule. We decided to, ch uh, to change to our mRNA, which is 10 times larger than our tRNA. And it, this raises a lot of questions. So could we use the same platform, the same formulation, the same process parameters to encapsulate a much larger, larger molecule? So let's see. Of course, if I'm here, it's because we were able to make it. And, <laughs> and as you can see, the particle size after production increased to the, twice the size, to the 100 nanometers, which is expected since the molecule is much larger. But we maintained the, the monodispersity of the, the particles, so we were happy with this. We used the trial 15 formulation, the PBS with um, the twin 80 formulation at a dilution ratio of 1 to 10 that previously worked with our tRNA, and we nebulized them. And again, we were able to maintain our uh, particle. Uh, however, we have a particle uh, increase we were able to maintain our st uh, colloidal stability and the monodispersed population. Additionally, if you notice, the particle size after uh, production is a little bit lower. This could indicate that the uh, microfluidic production should be improved because we want higher. However, we decide to continue because even uh, it's a little bit lower compared with our tRNA, we still have a high encapsulation efficiency. And now we, uh, went to the next question is uh, how was our, our mRNA? How was the integrity of our, our um, mRNA? And for that, we evaluate through HPLC uh, and we compared the production and the nebulization with the standard uh, uh, mRNA. And we can see that there is no ev evidence of degradation on the HPLC and neither on our jelly letter phrases, on where we were able to see the 1,000 base pair mRNA when compared with the standard. So it seems that our mRNA remains with its integrity. And what about the droplets? Because uh, we have the particle, but inside a, a drop, a, the nebulized droplet, there are a lot of particles. How is the aerodynamic performance? For that, we evaluate through NGI the aerodynamic performance of the droplets, where we achieve an aerodynamic diameter of 4.6 micron a fine particle fraction around the 50% and an emitted dose of 92%, which is a, a promising aerodynamic performance. So in conclusion, in this work, we end by having a reproducible platform for producing either uh, lipid nanoparticles encapsulating RNA and tRNA. And when these formulations were placed in the buffered uh, medium containing PBS and twin 80, we were able, at the dilution rate of, of one to 10, we were able to nebulize them and maintaining the colloidal stability of the particles. 
Additionally, the mRNA um, formulation was able to maintain the mRNA integrity. However, this is, was just a one year work, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. So right now, we are doing the optimization of the mRNA formulation to achieve a higher encapsulation efficiency, and we want to uh, understand how is the activity of the mRNA, because we saw that the mRNA was uh, maintained its integrity, but we do not know how it, uh, how it will be performed if it had any impact on its activity. Finally, I would like to thanks to the people, uh, to the persons that work with me. Without them, this was not possible, and I'm open to questions. Thank you.